Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion, tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of the channel. But anyways, I wanted to talk to you guys about a budget build that I'm doing for my sister. And it's around the neighborhood of $800 to $820, depending on the current market. I know everything's a little bit in fluctuation right now and I'm seeing a lot of prices jump around a lot. But here are the parts that we have listed for what this budget PC is going to have and what kind of performance can we expect out of it. Now I'm not going to get into any benchmarks today, the parts are still coming in as um, I speak right now actually, I'm still waiting on the power supply. So the benchmarks will be coming later and we're also going to do a build video with my sister featuring that so that will be definitely interesting because she doesn't know anything about PC parts. But I wanted to discuss to you guys why I chose the parts that I did for her build. So she came to me, she was like, I need space on my uh, hard drive. I've, I've ran out on uh, her Xbox One. Yeah, she has an Xbox One. She's, she's on console and she's about to be blown away with PC gaming. I, I just know she is. But anyways, uh, I think she has like a 500 gigabyte hard drive. She came to me and she was like, hey, I need more space. I just want a gaming PC. And I was like, well, it's about time. Because she told me this last year and we were going to go with another AMD budget build. I was going to be with the 6 core Vichera, I think, or something like that. It was going to be a $500 build, but she put hers up to 600 And after tax, it was like 650 Yeah, so the parts contained in the $650 price range does not include the GPU because I'm giving her the GPU. Now, the total encompassing price with the GPU would be about 800 dollars altogether to possibly 830 depending on the market like i stated just a couple minutes ago um, now the the card that i'm giving her is the msi gtx 970 that i have and for a used 970 you can pick up for about 200 bucks on ebay and you should be able to get a decent price for that considering what the gpu market is right now it's a little bit hard to find a mid-tier or higher end tier card for a justified uh, price because it is well above MSRP from what they actually are. So moving on to the rest of the parts of the build, I went with the Ryzen 1400 great budget CPU, has four cores and eight threads and about 3.2 gigahertz of a base clock with a boost frequency up to 3.5, I believe, I could be wrong. It's just numbers, but um, I might overclock at 3.6 and just have it running at that. Now, we also went with the MSI B350 Tomahawk board, and that was about $110. And I, I really like this board. It has the reinforced PCIe bracket. It also has uh, an M.2 slot. Not that she's going to be actually using that, but if she wants to do that in the future and have um, faster storage or perhaps install her OS on there instead of the SSD, she can do that as well. But it's nice to have these options in case for uh, you want to do some upgrading. And also, I like the color scheme on it. It's nice, it's monochromatic, and that's what she wanted. She didn't want RGBs or anything like that. She actually doesn't really care about the aesthetics. So, uh, the board is going to be a nice, just flat level design with just some gray and black on it. And also, the heat sinks are pretty cool looking too. It's like this bolted metal uh, finish on the uh, heat sink so it looks pretty cool and there's plenty of features of the b350 you can overclock with it. it it's just an overall really good budget board for 110 dollars that's a total win now for the memory we went with 16 gigabytes of 3000 megahertz of corsair vengeance ddr4 ram and that should be able to get more than plenty of the job done for her she doesn't need all 16 gigs of ram but i know she wants to do photoshop and photo image rendering and editing and stuff like that so i figured the extra 8 gigs of RAM would suffice pretty well and give her plenty of room to let her work with whatever she needs to for her PC. So it's not going to be just gaming, it's also going to be for productivity stuff as well. Oh yeah, and for storage options we have a 2 terabyte Western Digital Blue Drive and also a 120 gigabyte SSD from SP. So she has the storage for her SSD and we'll put the operating system on that obviously and uh, also larger programs programs like Photoshop and a couple other programs just to have them work really uh, fast and seamlessly as opposed to installing it on the hard drive. Um, now I believe the SSD came in at about $52 or so, somewhere around $50. And SSDs are going up in price, I know, um, but this is still a pretty good deal. 
relatively speaking, because you just want the OS and some larger programs just separated completely from the hard drive. And I just like having that diversification. For the power supply, we went with the EVGA Bronze Edition um, 750 watt non-modular power supply. Yeah, I know 750 watts is a little much, but um, she might upgrade it in the future with the 970, although I think the 970 is going to last her for a while, I really do. But the 750 watt gives her a little bit of headroom in, in case she wants to do some overclocking. I know she's not going to do it, I'm going to do it, but also just having that extra headroom was nice. And also, I think it was at the time it was on sale, and it, I think it was about 40 bucks, it was 39.83 or something like that. It was 40 bucks when I bought it, so. Uh, it was a really good price and I think it was actually cheaper than the 650 watt at the time since it was on sale. I could be wrong though, but for 40 bucks and 750 watts from EVGA, a bronze certified power supply, I was like, sure, why not? And the case that we went with was the Cooler Master Masterbox Lite 5. It's a new case from Cooler Master. It's an ATX mid tower case and it has a power supply uh, basement and it's also got an SSD plate for mounting. It's got a good amount of headroom for putting your um, ATX motherboard in. It's not fully crammed. It is a little bit smaller than uh, the Thermaltake Versa I have back there. Cable management shouldn't be too much of an issue. There's a good amount of space back there. Not nearly as much space as that Thermaltake Versa, although I think that thing's just a freak when it comes to cable management because there is an absurd amount of space in the back for cable management. But this case is pretty standard as far as cable management space goes for in the back panel. And also you have this nice window on the side. I believe it's acrylic, it's not tempered glass, and uh, but it has a tempered glass look to it and it's a nice open window so it's really cool it was about fifty dollars and it's a really cool budget oriented uh atx case with a power supply basement which is really cool it also gives you some options to change the trim on the front panel if you see those red accents it gives you options to switch it out for white or black so yeah that is the whole entire parts list. It comes at about eight hundred and twenty dollars or eight to eight twenty, depending on what the market is currently. But um, as far as the parts go, I would highly recommend these. Now, buying a used GPU could be throwing you off for some. If that's too much, then you can go with a ten fifty or a ten fifty Ti and save about you know thirty to fifty dollars or even another hundred dollars, depending on um, current sales on ten fifties. So those are really good options for you as well if you want to do a more budget oriented build you could be looking more into the 700 to 750 dollar range right there so a lot of people are looking into used gpus as a component to their budget build and i would i would recommend it more for some people if their budget's even tighter even when the gpu market isn't as or isn't as in much of a craze as it is usually like right now so uh, a 970 is definitely going to pull its weight, no problem with 1080p gaming, and she'll have no problem with that. It plays pretty much every game that I have at 1080p, 60fps at ultra settings, even Forza Horizon 3, which is impressive. So the 970 is still kicking, it's still alive, it's still a hustler, like that thing's awesome. So that this is my personal recommendation on the list. You could also you could save money in certain areas, like if you went with a one terabyte drive, or you didn't do the SSD, or if you went with eight gigs of RAM, or if you went with a cheaper case. But this is a pretty good case for fifty dollars, I think. People they also have a micro ATX version as well for forty dollars, so ten dollars cheaper than this one. I believe that's the Cooler Master Master Box Lite three point one. So there's also that option as well, and you can also go with the micro ATX board. You could definitely shorten this budget down to like maybe six hundred dollars to seven hundred six to seven hundred dollars with the 970 included so what i'll do for you guys is i'll list the 800 dollars build in the description and then i'll also list a 600 dollars build as well and all these parts came right off of amazon uh believe it or not so that was pretty nice because it all just came off of off of Prime and I got free shipping. And going through Newegg was um, a lot more expensive, at least from 
a couple days ago. So yeah, I'm gonna have both of those listed in the description. And uh, if you wanna see more budget builds, let me, well, yeah, of course you wanna see budget builds. I just don't have money. I just, I just want to make more budget builds for you guys. But anyways, we're gonna put this together. We're gonna have some fun with this. And also I'm gonna be reviewing some of the individual parts. If you wanna see a review of the B350 motherboard or the Ryzen 1400 or the, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a review of the cooler master case because that's new and i really want to try that but if you guys want to see a review on the tomahawk board and the ryzen 1400 just let me know and i'll do that for you guys all right so again if you guys are new here and you want to see more videos like this where we discuss pc parts and what kind of budget options i would choose and seeing these things come into fruition and testing out the benchmarks let me know and i can definitely make more videos like this one uh, and we'll be making a video later on and including those benchmarks. So I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And remember, if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. All right, catch you guys later.